The Denver Broncos are looking for their fourth straight win this season, but the LA Chargers, they're coming off a bye week, and we'll see what they bring to the table here in an AFC West matchup. Week six, we've got a special crossover Thursday episode. Locked on Broncos, locked on Chargers. You are locked on NFL crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to Crossover Thursday, one of your favorite days of the week. My name is Sayer Bettinger, co-host of the Locked On Broncos podcast, here to break down the Broncos and Chargers' first of two matchups this season with my man David Drogemeyer over there, co-host Locked On Chargers. David, I gotten to watch a little bit of you and Daniel this season. Great work from you guys already Thanks. thus far, and uh, I bet you're excited to get off an early bye week. It's not, it's never fun to go to an early bye week in the season, but you know what? Broncos, Chargers, a little AFC West showdown now here as we get back into the thick of things for you guys. Yeah, you never like an early buy before the season starts, but I think when the injuries start rolling in, then it may change your perception on when you have your buy. And the Chargers are, are were pretty beat up. You know, Justin Herbert was dealing with an ankle injury. Both of their tackles were dealing with injuries. They have a couple of corners that have been dealing with injuries. So um, the, it was one of those things where it happened to be at the, the right time for them to be able to get as healthy as possible, to be able to jump in to the rest of their, you know, 13 games that are left on their schedule. Well, we've got a lot to break down regarding this particular matchup between the Broncos and the Chargers, but want to first let you know that this episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code all lowercase locked on NFL to win $50 instantly when you play five dollars and shout out to all of you that make locked on broncos locked on chargers your first listen of the day every single day you know that you can find your boys cody and sarah locked on broncos as well as david and daniel over there locked on chargers breaking down all things broncos and chargers all season long david let's jump into this because Man, uh, obviously there's a lot of storylines for the Chargers. They started off looking pretty darn good those first two weeks. They were running the ball well. Looked like J.K. Dobbins was having himself a time. And then, you know, hit a little bit of a buzzsaw the last two weeks going into the bye week. What's your vibe on this team? What are the biggest storylines here as the Chargers come out of their bye going into this matchup in Denver? Yeah, it's a tale of two game stretches, right? They start the season hot um, going up against the Raiders and the Panthers and look really look like the Jim Harbaugh style of football was already taking effect. Uh, but then you run into two really good football teams and the Steelers and, and the Chiefs and you keep it competitive. Like they, they really were in both those football games. They gave themselves opportunities while dealing with some crippling injuries. But when we're talking about the biggest storylines for the Chargers, it's Will we see an improved offense after the bye? The Chargers offense struggled for long stretches, and it's really been like very apparent. You know, they've had several three and out drives. They've had, you know, it feels like five or six different three and outs in pretty much the last three football games. And you just can't win a lot of games when you have that much inconsistency on offense. A lot of communication issues on the offensive line. They've really struggled with the stunts and the twists. So, the hopefully during the bye week they've been able to hammer down on that communication um and you know it's back to back points of scoring only 10 points uh, of 10 games excuse me two games uh scoring only 10 points in each contest and that's just not going to get it done in in the National Football League no matter how good your defense has been playing so now they're going up against one of the best defenses in the NFL obviously with the Denver Broncos and you know it has to look better and you, know, you got to score more than 10 points to win a game that's likely going to be pretty low scoring and you're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity that you get. Yeah. The chargers to your point there, David, obviously 28th in points. And, and of course it's been so early in the season. It's tough to, it's tough to kind of look at league rankings. Obviously you, you know, four performances thus far is what we have to go off for the chargers, only five for the Broncos. And so we'll statistically kind of see things go. Uh, we'll see what happens as the season goes along. Right. But you mentioned yeah. the Broncos being one of the best teams in the league defensively, but the chargers, I mean, statistically speaking, the best team in the NFL defensively so far this season, they are first in the NFL at 12.5 points per game allowed so far this year. The Chargers going up against, I mean, they have had a game against Kansas City, so you can't discount that statistic by any means. 
do you feel like this team has the ability to be, you know, sort of one of the top defenses in terms of longevity this season? Or what's your big storyline defensively for the Chargers going into this game? Yeah, it's 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 really insane to sit here right now to start the season saying that the Chargers have the number one defense in the NFL after watching Brandon Staley pretend to be a head coach defensive coordinator for the last three years and author after authoring, you know, one of the best defenses in the NFL with the Rams for one year, um, go on to be the head coach of the chargers and then go orchestrate three and a half of the worst defenses that the chargers have seen in the last 25 years. Um, it's been absolutely atrocious and there hasn't been a lot of turnover on, on the defensive side. A couple of new faces, Christian Fulton, uh, guys like Puna Ford, like some guys that are kind of have been forgotten. You know, these, these guys are trying to come in and, and really take advantage of some second chances and they have done extremely well. Christian Fulton's been disgustingly good on, on the outside opposite of Asante Samuel Jr. Um, outside of one big play, it's it's really only been a handful of catches. But um, I think the big storyline for the Chargers on defense, it really stems from Derwin James coming back. Derwin James was suspended um, last, uh, last week or the last time that the Chargers played against the Kansas City Chiefs uh, because of a illegal hit on the tight end Pat Fryermuth. And it, it kind of sucks because Derwin James is the type of football player that, you know, regardless of your allegiance, this guy, you enjoy watching football because he comes downhill and he is like a heat seeking missile. Um, but, you know, and he was playing one of the best games uh, of his entire season against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was absolutely everywhere um, and he can do it all. Like he can rush the quarterback. He can run sideline to sideline. He can uh, cover your tight ends, your, your wide receivers. He can play back. He can play in the box. He can do a little bit of everything. And the thing is, is we just hope that this suspension doesn't turn Derwin James into more of a passive player because a passive version of Derwin James is not the most effective version of Derwin James. Derwin James has to go out there, play fast, play physical in a game like this, where a turnover may change the entire trajectory of the entire contest. You need Derwin James to be flying around at his physical aggressive best um, if you want to be able to capitalize on those opportunities when they arise and you also hope too. i mean given the fact broncos fans have been going through i guess not this year but in previous years since 2019 when kareem jackson became a denver bronco you kind of go through that whole situation where okay every single week you're now under the microscope and you yeah. just don't want that for a player like derwin james who you know, he, he makes watching defense a lot of fun out there, the way that he plays when he's playing fast and free. Um, obviously, you want the players to be safe, but at the same time, let the guy uh, go do what he does best out there. Of course, Denver Broncos fans do not want to see Derwin James delivering many big hits in week six here as the Broncos try to win their fourth straight game this season. But a couple of things for the Denver Broncos this coming week, they need to keep the running game going. And then defensively, how are they going to look after a few hard fought games in a row going up against a team that is coming off of a bye week? We're going to break down some of the biggest storylines for the Denver Broncos up next on this crossover Thursday edition, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Chargers. Today's episode, Locked on Broncos, Locked on Chargers, is brought to you by Z-Biotics. Z-Biotics pre-alcohol probiotic drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Pre-alcohol produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Z-Biotics your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow. Go to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL to learn more and get 15% off your first order when you use locked on NFL at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a hundred percent money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL at checkout for 15% off. 
Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Game Time. We all love going to live events, whether it's a comedian that we love. I love me some Nate Bargatze. If he's ever coming to Omaha, I'm going to go see him. Uh, if it's not a comedian, it could be your favorite music artist or, of course, your favorite sports team. You want to go see the Broncos or the Chargers play in person. Game Time is going to make making those memories for you so much easier. you got to download the Game Time app. And what you do is you pick an upcoming live event, whatever it is, if it's a comedian, a concert, a game, you browse through the seats and you can use all of Game Time's amazing features. They have the super deal, seat views before you buy, and always the lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and so much more. So what you got to do is you got to take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, Create an account and redeem code locked on NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. What time is it? Game time. Can the Broncos continue to run the ball effectively here in week six of the NFL season against a team that is coming off a of bye week? The Chargers with the number one defense in the NFL after their four games that they've played. We're breaking down the biggest storylines here for the Denver Broncos as we get into this week six matchup and a crossover Thursday edition locked on Broncos and locked on Chargers. But want to say thank you so much to every single one of you that makes locked on Broncos and locked on Chargers your first listen of the day every single day. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts as well as go check out each of the show's over there on YouTube where you can see all of our beautiful faces and sound off in the comments section. Let's talk about the Broncos' biggest storylines in this game. David, obviously, when you look at this team, they're trying to win their fourth straight game. I think that's the overarching big storyline right now as a lot of people, hey, uh, I mean, including our friends over there at FanDuel, they thought the Broncos you know, over under five and a half wins to start this season. The Broncos already at three wins. They've won three in a row after starting 0-2, to me, when you look offensively, the biggest storyline for this Denver Broncos team is can the running game continue to improve? Because over the first two games, it was absolutely terrible. Just awful watching this team try to run. They weren't converting third down, so you're not even able to really get into a flow offensively. And these last three games against the Bucks, it was Tyler Bidet running for 70 yards on nine carries. And then against the Jets, Javante Williams, Jaleel McLaughlin get going. And then against the Raiders here in week five, uh, man, Javante Williams looking like vintage Javante Williams. So can you keep it going against a defense like the Chargers? Like we talked about, number one in the NFL in points allowed right now. But not only that, I mean, the Chargers have guys up front on that defensive line that can make plays behind the line of scrimmage. Broncos fans know Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack very well. The Chargers are the number five ranked defense in the NFL in terms of yards per carry allowed this season. This is going to be a fun potential storyline to follow in this game. It definitely is. And I think one of the things that I noticed about the Denver Broncos is kind of a similar parallel to the Chargers is sustaining offensive drives. The Denver Broncos have punted the most, um, actually have tied with the Browns for the most punts in the National Football League through five games. So that's a lot. And, and so, you know, going up against a, a defense like the Chargers, it's going to be tough sledding. It's going to be really, really tough sledding to be able to sustain offense. So running the ball, I think, is going to be paramount for both of these teams. I think my my question really about the, the offense is, what has your assessment been so far of Bo Nix and kind of how he has uh, handled his himself as a starter? Um, we still seeing some growing pains. Um, it definitely seems like we are. He's gotten the benefit of a lot of short fields. Uh, because of the the Broncos defense providing some turnovers and uh, getting after the quarterback and really giving them some short fields. So what's your assessment been of Bo Nix so far through the first five games? I think really encouraged by his progress for sure. I mean, we saw that Seattle game kind of disastrous in a lot of ways, you know, a lot of short passes. And then when you do try to sling it downfield, a couple of balls got picked off. So it wasn't necessarily the best debut for him and then you know against the Pittsburgh Steelers that's the thing is that you go up against you know Mike McDonald and then you have Mike Tomlin and his defense and then you have uh, Todd Bowles and all these different guys that 
that you're going up against right away in the NFL. So kind of a trial by fire and a very tough baptism into the NFL. But we've seen over the last three games, I mean, he's got five total touchdowns and no interceptions, no turnovers in that time frame. He just completed over 70% of his throws there against the Raiders. And what we what we're really seeing more of in these last three games is the Broncos willingness to sort of open up the playbook with deep passes downfield, which I think leads directly to the success that they're having in the running game. At least if you're willing to take shots downfield, it keeps defenses honest. Now we want to see them start to hit on some of those plays, right? You want to see them start to connect on the, the deep balls to Troy Franklin and Marvin Mims and things like that. The timing just hasn't quite been there on some of them, but we are seeing progression, I think week to week. So is Bo Nix uh, out there? Uh, is he going to win rookie of the year as of right now? I don't know that that's the case, David, but I think encouraging signs overall. And as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, we're manifesting over here in Broncos country. Uh, so we're hopeful. And I think that Bo Nix has given folks reason for hope, which is, is very exciting. And I'm sure, as you know, I mean, back to Justin Herbert's rookie season, you know, you watch him kind of take the league by storm immediately because Justin was what one of 12 guys in, in, Super Bowl era to throw for over 20 touchdowns his rookie year. It's uncommon. And I think that can be an unfair expectation and curve to grade on when it comes to young QBs. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is. I mean, Justin Herbert, looking at his stats through the first four years in the league, it, it's historic. I mean, it's historically great. And and when you, know, you have that in your mind and you see that in your division, I think it's only natural to say, OK, now we have our first round young quarterback. Uh, And he's going to go out there and take the world by storm immediately. And that's just not always the case. Like, uh, you know, your progression is not always linear in the National Football League. Um, Sometimes you come in ready to rear and to go. I mean, hardly that's the case. Uh, I do feel like your growth accelerates when you get to the NFL level, when you get in front of the best coaches with the best training staffs and the and the, uh, you know, all of the equipment that they could ever need to be at their best. Uh, I feel like, you know, you have to give them some time to be able to work into things. But as far as, you know, the defensive side here, switching things over, the Broncos defense has been, you know, what the Broncos defense has been the last 10 years, really, really good. And they've been getting after the quarterback. They've been getting interceptions. They've been, you know, providing some short fields, like I mentioned earlier. Um, What's the storyline there for the Broncos defense going into this one? Well, like you said, they've been playing really well. So I think going into this week, it's going to be one. Can you keep it going? Like this defensive front has been outstanding to start the year. The Broncos have so many different guys who are are winning one on one matchups, creating opportunities for other guys on that defensive front. Jonathan Cooper playing extremely well. Zach Allen maybe having the best year that he's had as a pro. And then guys like John Franklin Myers, Malcolm Roach, Nick Benito in recent games. They've just been making so many plays behind the line of scrimmage these days and causing havoc for teams. And Vance Joseph, I mean, he's blitzing almost as much, if not more than anybody else in the NFL. So not only are the Broncos able to win with their four guys up front, but then Vance is is sending interesting blitz packages at teams, to say the least. And we saw that finally culminate in a you know, a bunch of turnovers against the Las Vegas Raiders, three interceptions, including the pick six from Pat Sertan. And it's the play of Sertan and in the end zone too. in the end zone. I mean, it Ooh. was reminiscent of our guy, Chant Bailey, you know, in a lot of ways, he just, he's so smooth out there yeah, uh, he's making really, plays really on the football. He is. He's he's so much fun to watch. But now I it's bet. Riley Moss too on the other side, like Riley. Yeah. Moss looking at his numbers, like he, he's, he's playing pretty good for a rookie. I mean, it's it's been great to see. And, and like, look, if the Broncos can keep that going, that's the thing. As I, I kind of teased it uh, before, uh, you know, we were talking about this. I teased that, hey, can you keep it going with a team that's coming off a bye after you've won three hard fought games in a row? Like yeah. Riley Moss, the guy we were just talking about, he even mentioned like when you win games in a row like it can be easy a little bit to kind of just get okay you know a little lackadaisical things like that so the broncos can't come out flat against the chargers because they did against the raiders and uh, until that pick six by pat sertan it almost they were almost going to go down 17 to 3 at that point they were five yards away so yeah this defense for the broncos can they keep it going here with the chargers coming off the bye that's going to be the ultimate question right and and i i think uh you know, this is going to be a, a really a tale. Both defenses are going to have their say. Like they're great, great teams on that side of the ball. It's about who is going to make the best plays on offense to be able to sustain drives and score points. Because, like I said before, I do feel like points are going to be at a premium. But speaking of what each team has to do to get in here to win this football game, we got to go over the 
keys to victory for both of these teams. Um, and Sarah, we, we got to do that here right now. We got to do it. We're going to break down our keys to victory in this game as the Broncos, once again, looking for their fourth straight win. Chargers looking to grab a W coming out of the bye. We're breaking it down up next on today's crossover Thursday edition. Locked on Broncos, locked on Chargers. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. So head over to FanDuel right now and check out some of the different odds and props for this Broncos and Chargers game. The Broncos actually home underdogs in this game against the Chargers. And as David was saying, maybe a low scoring game. So you might want to maybe take a look at the over under in this game. Go check out FanDuel.com and you can find all of that on there. That's FanDuel. Dot com. Well, we know that one of these teams is going to come away with a win in week six, the Broncos or the Chargers, but how is it going to get done? We're going to be breaking down keys to victory on this crossover Thursday edition, locked on Broncos and locked on Chargers. And I want to say thank you one more time to all of you that make locked on Broncos or locked on Chargers your first listen of the day every single day. We appreciate you every day out there. And if you're just stumbling upon the show for the first time, hey, why don't you make us an everyday listen? Hit subscribe wherever you get your podcast as well as on YouTube. David, I'm going to throw it to you. Three keys to victory for the L.A. Chargers in this game as they look to improve to three and two coming out of the bye week. Yeah, first and foremost, it's protect Justin Herbert. And some good news for the Chargers. They are all pro left tackle. Rashawn Slater did make his way back to practice today uh, as we are recording this on a Wednesday. So that is fantastic news. The Chargers with Rashawn Slater at full strength, two and oh. Without Rashawn Slater, 0-2. So having Rashawn Slater back at practice and Joe Walt also back at practice, uh, both those guys were uh, unfortunately out for the last game against the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and, you know, the Chargers did well to keep that game close. But having those guys in there to protect Justin Herbert, who's still, I'm sure, uh, recovering from that ankle injury is of paramount importance. And the pass block win rate for the Chargers has been atrocious. They've been 31st in the league. And as you mentioned before, the Broncos blitz more than anyone in the league besides the Vikings at 40.1% of the time. They're also fourth in the league in pressure percentage. If the Chargers can do a better job in pass protection, picking up the stunts and the blitzes, they will have a much better chance of winning in this football game. Second thing is keeping the Broncos under 100 yards rushing. This is a hard line. It's very important. The Broncos have had over 100 yards rushing in all three of their wins and have not eclipsed 100 yards in either of their losses. So controlling the running game and forcing Bo Nix to go out there and throw more than the Broncos want them to throw is definitely going to be the recipe for them. And then the last thing is avoiding the penalties. The Chargers have shot themselves in the foot, especially against the Kansas City Chiefs. They had nine penalties against the Chiefs. And they are so killer. This is not an offense that can overcome third and 10 plus. They're just not. They're not built that way. Three third downs of third and 14 plus against the Kansas City Chiefs. That is a recipe for disaster when you have an injured quarterback that's out there fighting for his life and trying to stay in the game and play for you. Denver defense will eat them alive if they do that this week. So they absolutely have to stay in those more manageable down and distance situations. That means cleaning up the pre-snap penalties. And hopefully they got those communication issues fixed during the bye week. That right there, to me, are the biggest keys to victory for the Chargers in this one. And the Denver Broncos just want to do the opposite of all those things. <laughs> no, uh, we got three keys for the Denver Broncos here against the L.A. Chargers in week six. Number one, feed Javante Williams. Number two, limit the big plays defensively. And number three, hit some shot plays offensively. So we talked about feeding Javante Williams in segment two, and we're talking about big storylines. Can the Broncos keep that running game going? As David mentioned, the Broncos have gone over 100 yards rushing in each of their last three games. 
games, all three of those games being victories. And we know when teams are running the ball well, they're probably running more plays. And if they're running more plays, they're probably controlling time of possession uh, most of the time. So you want to be able to run the ball very well against a Chargers team that has been pretty stingy defensively. So if you can pick up yardage on the ground, gain yardage after contact, make this a physical game. That's what the Broncos want to do in this one. And then obviously defensively here, limit those big plays because that's one area where the Broncos have struggled a little bit this season. We saw it with the big touchdown to, to uh, Brock Bowers against the Raiders. We saw it with uh, Amir. I think it was Amir Abdullah or one of the running backs there for the Raiders had a big run, a big chunk run that set them up in scoring range as well. And not only that, David, but the Broncos top three corners. I mean, they're very good. Pat Sertan, Riley Moss, Jaquan McMillan. They're very, very good players. They have a combined eight pass interference penalties called against them this wow. season so far. So that could be dependent a little bit on the officiating crew at times. But also, you know, teams have found out like these guys, they're grabby out there. They're physical. They want to make plays on the ball. So, hey, if you throw the ball deep and, and these guys make one one wrong move, one false move, you might get yourself a flag that sets you up with a big play. So the Broncos need to limit those big plays defensively, but they also need to hit some shot plays on the offensive side. I said it before, but they've missed on a couple of them, especially against the Raiders with Troy Franklin should have had a, a long touchdown catch, uh, just went right through his hands. And then there's been other times where, that. you know, Bo Nix has thrown it just a little bit too far, missed his guy or, you know, things like that. Again, they've, they've hit on some 20 plus yard plays, but Man, if they can start connecting on some of these shot plays that are opening up, that the run game is helping open up for them, that is going to be a complete game changer for Bo Nix and this offense. So not just against the Chargers, but I think going forward, those are the big keys to victory for the Denver Broncos in this game. Yeah, this one's going to be a physical one. Uh, we we know the Chargers have not found a lot of success, and unfortunately, Justin Herbert has never won at mile high. Um it's going to be a crazy environment. It's going to be raucous. It's going to be loud. It's going to be really tough on your body because you're going up in the elevation. Um, so the conditioning is going to definitely uh, take a part or play a part in this game. You got to have your best when your best is required. And that means in the fourth quarter, when a lot of these games in the NFL are decided, you got to have your best in those moments to be able to close out the game. So we will see who is going to be in their best form in the fourth quarter because I feel very strongly that this game could go down to the wire. A couple of former Oregon Ducks quarterbacks, as you and I were talking about off the camera a little earlier, as well as, look, hey, Sean Payton, formerly rumored to be a uh, head coach candidate oh, yeah. for the Chargers, and Jim Harbaugh, I believe Broncos ownership, went to his house in Ann Arbor, Michigan, to interview him. So uh, a lot of uh, different dynamics at play in this game. I'm sure the TV crew, uh, whoever's calling this game, is going to have a lot of fun nuggets for all of us watching the game at home. Uh, but we appreciate you so much, Broncos country, as well as Chargers fans out there. So glad that you decided to join us for this special crossover Thursday edition. Always love getting to talk with David and Daniel over there. Uh, but hey, look, since you made Locked On Broncos, Locked On Chargers your first listen of the day, you might as well go check out the new Locked On NFL and make that your second listen of the day. You can check out Tyler Rowland over there, kick off your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso, and then stop by the barber shop with our man Tony Wiggins for some real NFL talk. And you can find Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So Broncos fans, Chargers fans, we appreciate you all so much, and we'll see you all soon.